well, this was a surprise. I must say, I certainly wasn't expecting myself to be making a video on the Adam Sandler silly talking lizard film. But here we are. Experiencing moments where I'm heavily invested in the characters. Moments where I'm feeling genuine emotion. Moments where I'm actually laughing. Not to mention the high praise I've been seeing this film getting. That's right, folks. We are living in a reality where the Adam Sandler Silly Talking Lizard film is being praised higher than Disney's 100th anniversary special film. What the actual fuck? Leo is a 2023 animated film on Netflix, which focuses around an old classroom pet lizard called Leo, who recently discovers that his species has an expected lifespan of 75 years. And with him now being 74, he begins to panic as he realizes he hasn't done anything meaningful with his life. It's too late. I blew it. I wasted my life. And now it's almost over. This film was genuinely a pleasant surprise to me, as after watching the trailer for it, I had mixed feelings. On one hand, it did seem like it had potential. An elderly figure who was facing an existential crisis, but could also pass down the life lessons he's learned to a younger generation. I'm thinking, okay, yeah, this could be pretty good. But then I could also see a bunch of goofy slapstick, and I'm thinking, oh yeah, Adam Sandler. But I was still curious, and so went in with a cautious mindset. Not expecting much, something that was just a bit mid. A typical Adam Blandler, you might say. Please laugh. But no, this was actually good. Like, really good. Sure, it's no masterpiece, as there are certain issues I had with it that I will get into later, but overall, I found myself liking this film a lot more than I expected to. Now, earlier I mentioned Leo as a lizard, as I initially assumed that he was an iguana, but according to Wikipedia, Leo is actually meant to be a tuatara, which technically isn't a lizard at all, but rather a species of lizard-like reptiles called <clears throat> Rhynchocephalia. But the film and other sources do still refer to Leo as a lizard, though me personally, I'm more inclined to believe that Leo is in fact a Tuatara, as the oldest living iguana didn't even make it to 70 years old, whereas the Tuatara can, especially when kept in captivity. Having figured out that he only has one year left, Leo decides that he wants to break free from the classroom and experience life in the true wild so formulates a plan that when he's taken home for the weekend by one of the other students, he'll break out and escape. This, however, doesn't happen, and he accidentally reveals to a student that he can talk. He convinces her to keep him talking a secret, and in return, Leo is able to offer her some advice on how to deal with her problems. Each day, Leo is taken home by a different student, and the same pattern of events occurs. Which I know sounds like it could get a bit repetitive, but it really doesn't as each of the kids Leo helps do present a unique problem, and Leo's advice to them does feel sincere. Other kids don't want to hang out with you? How about trying not to ramble on too much and allow others to speak? Ask them engaging questions. Need to let someone go for independence? Well, perhaps you need to break up with them, but make sure you do it in a respectful manner. And what if you're unable to provide a solution to a person's problem? Well, sometimes just simply listening can be enough. There is a surprising amount of heart in this film, and there are other factors which work for it as well, such as the animation. Now, being a direct-to-Netflix product, the animation isn't going to be as polished as you'd expect from something like Pixar or DreamWorks, but I still think the film does a great job with it. The animation is done by Animal Logic, the same studio that animated the Lego movies, Peter Rabbit, and DC League of Super Pets. It has a lot of that style where there are fast jerky movements happening on screen, whilst the character is also standing near still, and it makes for some great comedic moments. A lot of this style is used on the drone character in the film, which is low-key the MVP. The drone doesn't have any spoken dialogue, and so all of its comedy comes from visual gags, and they absolutely nail it. There are also some creative shots used, like when Leo is being taken home by one of the students, we get a POV shot from Leo's perspective. But rather than doing the typical, looking through the POV shot, 
Cutting back to his reaction, looking back again, cutting back to the reaction. They actually managed to blend both as we see Leo's reaction in the reflection of the glass. I quite like that. There's also the occasional shift in animation style, mostly in the song numbers, where we get some 2D and paper cut animation. Nothing breathtaking, but I still thought it was neat. I also love the uncanny designs for the kindergarten children, but just don't pause on any of their faces or else it will give you nightmares. The humour is also surprisingly on point, with a lot of it being quite dry and cynical, such as when Leo and Squirtle are making commentary on the class students. There's the class clown who secretly despises himself. <laughs> hysterical calls. There are quite a few visual gags, such as with the kindergarten kids running into objects, or just with any scene featuring the drone. And some jokes are just really obscure. There's this song number about halfway through, which features a bunch of talking watches, and when the song ends, they just casually leave. But because the dad didn't tip them for the song, they randomly appear later on in the film stealing his wallet. And the comedic timing overall is very well done, with how most of these jokes are thrown at such a fast pace, which even resulted in a poo joke getting a laugh out of me. How was your summer? Do anything fun? Sleep. Sleep. Eat. Lot of pooping. Terrific. Now it's not to say that every joke lands, there were a few gross out moments which really didn't need to be in there, and even a dick joke that breaks the fourth wall. What else can I count with? I tell you about this kid's around. <laughs> I was talking about his tail. <laughs> but luckily, these are few and far between. I'd say overall, around 80% of the jokes worked for me. What do I have to do to get that horrible woman replaced? Dr. Wanger, please. She's sitting right here. As for the characters, they're actually pretty good too. Adam Sandler voices Leo. Initially, I wasn't too on board with the goofy voice he provided for Leo. Kind of sounded like a discount Yoda in places. Great. Why can't they move us around a little so we can know more? But as the film went on, it oddly grew on me. Bill Burr voices the turtle. And yeah, he's doing the Chris Pratt style of voice acting where he is just sounding like himself, but it works. What's the turtle's name again? Squirtle. My name is Squirtle. I do think the chemistry between Leo and Squirtle is good. Despite the two presenting themselves as very cynical at the start, we do see differences between them. Leo actually has empathy towards the kids and genuinely wishes to help them. Whereas initially, Squirtle only wants to do it for the recognition. And so when Squirtle tries to give advice to the class bully, he doesn't actually care for the bully's needs and is just trying to fish out any generic problem as quickly as possible. The bully says he doesn't feel as smart as everyone else and asks how babies are made. Squirtle, ignoring the bigger picture of why the bully doesn't feel as smart, simply ends up telling him and ends up giving bad advice. The daddy reaches under the mommy to find her cloaca. This goes on for about 24 hours. Leo, overhearing the whole thing, realizes there's much deeper insecurities going on, with the bully not just worried about not being smart, but also fearful of being held back again and missing friends as a result. So Leo reassures him, telling him it's okay not to know everything, and that these times are the good times. And this scene probably contains my favorite line in the entire film, where the bully asks Leo, do you miss being a kid? And Leo responds with, I'm just glad I'm still here. I love that. I also like how they handled the substitute teacher, who initially you think is going to be the antagonist of the film, employing a strict, no carrot and all stick method of teaching and wanting to do everything old school. Like, ugh, look at her, favoring books over laptops, stupid boomer. But as the film progresses, the students begin to achieve things thanks to Leo's advice, and we see her hard exterior begin to drop as she begins getting praises from the others around her, even starting to feel joy from the student she's teaching. And when she eventually opens up to Leo, we see that she did have good intentions to be this wonderful teacher, but due to a lack of support and appreciation, she put on this tough persona as a way of shielding herself. Later on in the film, Oh, and this is where I'm going to get into some spoilers, by the way. So if you don't want any spoilers, uh, probably best click off now. Later on in the film, she ends up dumping Leo in a park, as she's fearful that if everyone found out it was him helping the class, 
she would lose all the praise and credit she's been receiving, and thus the happiness that came along with it. But she soon realises that this false sense of accomplishment doesn't give her the joy she thought it would, and so rights her wrongs and sets off with the students to go rescue Leo. Okay, now I did mention that this film isn't perfect, and there are some negatives which I do feel hold it back. First up is the fact that this film is also a musical. Now there's nothing wrong with being a musical, but the songs really aren't too great, and have some really questionable lyrics in places. I'd laugh for days when I was two, when someone said the word doo-doo. But the worst part isn't the songs themselves, but more so their placement, as they often come out of nowhere and occur when Leo is given advice to the students. Like, there are good lyrics in these songs, but I just think they could have been delivered better if it was an actual conversation. I think that's why when Leo talked to the bully, it's one of the better interactions in this film, because it doesn't contain a song, and so the dialogue feels like it has more weight to it. I don't think I would have minded so much if the film had just stuck with its opening song, and then when the substitute teacher turns up with this line... Oh, I don't say. Oh, okay. Don't do any more songs after that. At least not until the very end. Where, funnily enough, there was an end song which was cut out. If you watch past the end credits, you'll see this storyboard segment, which features the kids now starting fifth grade, singing a reprisal of the opening song last year. Which, honestly, I'm kind of sad that this didn't make the official end to the film, as I think it brings the story to a complete circle, topped off with the little kindergarten kid still running into the door. The plot can also feel a bit clunky in places, particularly that in the third act, so throughout the film Leo is telling each student that only they can hear him talk, because they are special, then later on they figure out that Leo lied to them, and they get really upset with him because of it. Honestly, it feels like this was an unnecessary conflict. Because 1. Leo only initially did it as a way of trying to keep his ability to talk a secret, as he didn't want to end up in a science lab. But 2. The kids just kind of forgive him very soon after. Like they go out to give their history performances, remember the advice that he gave them, and then are like, oh yeah, Leo is actually a pretty cool guy. I thought they were going to have to do the whole speech with Leo of, well technically I was telling you guys the truth because you are all special and in return you've made me feel special and then everyone would hug it out. But no, the kids are just like, oh man, we actually miss Leo, let's go say we're sorry, by which point the substitute teacher has already taken him away. There's also a moment towards the end where the substitute teacher and the class steal the school bus from the PE coach, even spraying him in the eyes with hand gel. Then next time we see him, he's all cool about it. Like, no explanation or anything. You know, a substitute teacher who you don't really know, just stole a school bus with a bunch of kids, not to mention assaulted you. Did you not even think to report this to the police or anything? No? Okay. And then there's a fight scene at the end of the film with an alligator, which comes out of complete nowhere. A kind of uh, big-lipped alligator moment, so to speak. And the way it's resolved is by the rambly student then boring it to sleep? Like, okay, I guess that's kind of a full circle. Sure. It almost felt as though this scene never initially existed, and then someone just said, Oh shit, we'll have a fight scene at the end for like action and drama and stuff, so yeah, just put it in. And my final nitpick is with the element of crime which I felt got dropped from the film. So when one of the students starts crying in front of Leo, he tells her that she shouldn't cry, as crying is for weaklings. Now initially I thought this could be to highlight Leo's own shortcomings, but then it turns out to be a fake out by him, as he was only saying that so she would realise the answer herself. You're just doing what my grandpa did, pretending not to know something so I can tell you it's right. Okay, that's cool. But at the beginning of the film, Leo does seem to actually hold the view that crying is for weaklings. Like kids don't cry enough? We gotta trigger the little garden hoses? Crying's for weaklings. Right! So what happened? The film does kinda try to explain this, as Leo states he didn't know what to say, so he just let the kid do the explaining to themselves. Okay, so let's go with that Leo wasn't pretending not to know, and that the kid just assumed it, but man, it was pretty lucky that the one kid he couldn't help happened to also have the ability to teach themselves anyway. 
Now, I know it sounds like I did have a lot of negatives with the film, but honestly, those are just nitpicks. Overall, I really did enjoy this film. It has great characters, great comedy, and a lot of heartfelt moments. When one of the children says that Leo reminds her of her grandfather who's passed away, I felt that. Seeing that look on Leo's face when the substitute teacher lies to him about the kids losing the contest and hating him, I felt that. And at the end when they all reunite again, I felt that. And so I really do recommend you going to check out this film if you haven't done already. And that is certainly something I thought I'd never be saying about the Adam Sandler, silly talking Rinko Sophilia film. And until the next one guys, take care.